was a lot of the coverage in the second half was talking about you, your future with Green Bay. Has that been every conversation with every commentator that has come in just asked about that? And how do you feel that is, uh, how do you feel about that situation currently with what Gunter Kuntz has brought in, where the team is at, your relationship with him allegedly as soon as you got back on the field after a lot of days off because the toe and COVID, you went right up to Gunter Kuntz, uh, dapped him up. Packers fans were super pumped about that. Where are you mentally with all of that? And is that the only thing the commentator ask you about now <laughs> no i mean look it's going to be one of the questions for sure moving forward as we get late in the season i understand that and and uh, i got a question after the game if it was my last time playing against the bears and uh yeah i haven't thought about that a whole lot i mean i really i really haven't i think when you're a creature of habit during the season you you your focus uh, definitely narrows um but at some point there'll be obviously time to reflect on that and to think about uh, the season, but I think that's, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks away. So in the meantime, I don't know that Chris talked to Brian. I don't usually GMs. I don't think do production meetings, but, uh, but he, there was a lot of questions from, uh, from, you know, all Catherine, Al and, and, uh, and Chris and, uh, and Freddie about, uh, about, you know, that idea of, uh, you know, where I'm at mentally with the team. And, um, yeah, I don't want to overshare uh, in those situations just because I feel like, uh, just like during the off season, a lot of those conversations need to stay uh, between the people involved uh, with them. But um, you know, that's been uh, been a good year conversation between Brian and myself. Um, you know, I feel like I've been involved in a lot of conversations uh, about certain uh, individuals on this, you know, on the squad and also on other squads and making our team better. Um, obviously, there's been uh, some acquisitions that I think have really, uh, really helped out and paid dividends. With Sewell Douglas, you know, being oh. as big as, as as any of them, but Devondre Campbell as well. Um, I was thinking about it after the game the other night. Uh, the beauty uh, in this, in the in the game, and why I feel romantic about it from time to time is, is the redeeming uh, qualities uh, that a team uh, can have. The redeeming nature of bringing guys back into the fold who weren't really wanted by other teams and making them feel like they have a real home. And it's that res- restoring of dignity opportunity that, that I think every locker room and team has a chance to do based on the personnel that comes in and, and the type of personalities that those individual players have. But we've had a lot of guys who I think were kind of outcast guys or, or afterthoughts at times, whether they're draft picks who got passed over by a number of teams or drafted later than they thought they were going to be drafted or players who are on the street who weren't wanted by teams. And there's been a, a decent amount of those guys uh, who we've uh, acquired over the years. And I think when you add enough of those guys together and you make them feel like they're a part of something special, you can really create a tight, cohesive group. And you look look at the guys that we, that are making a big impact for us on both sides of the ball. There's a lot of those type of guys, not just the Rasul Douglases and Devondre Campbells of the world, um, but Preston Smith coming back and taking a, uh, you know, a pay cut uh, and, and, you know, setting aside his ego and his pride and I think he's had such an important impact on our team, not just from a production standpoint, but from a leadership standpoint. Um, you know, on offense, we just plugged in Dennis Kelly, who wasn't really wanted by a lot of teams, and he had a, had a very nice game for us. Aaron Jones was a late-round draft pick who a lot of people didn't think would ever gonna, was ever going to be a number one pick. Look at our offensive line. We have Yash Nishman at left tackle. We have John Runyon Jr. at left guard. Lucas Patrick at center. Royce Newman and his mullet at right guard, and Dennis yeah. Kelly at right tackle. A lot of those guys were either undrafted, drafted late, or not thought of as, as guys who were going to be contributors to our football team, especially not starting the season now, other than maybe Lucas, who was expected to start for us at one of the interior positions. And that's kind of, I think that sets an attitude in the squad of, of guys who are able to set aside their ego and have some sort of chip on their shoulder and have some appreciation for coming together uh, and, and being a part of chemistry in the locker room and togetherness and connectedness. And it's it's similar to, to the teams that AJ was on that, that were our best teams over the years, 2009, 2010, 2014. Um, where we had a really tight locker room, and, and it, it's a good feeling coming to work every day. So you love being a Green Bay Packer right now, yeah? <laughs> I love playing ball, man. Oh, he's I, loving ball. Oh. Loving ball. This guy loving ball. I love, I love that. Ball. Go ahead, Ty. That's got to be great to hear. 